I'm Dave Mercer. And I'm Matt Pangrak. Welcome to The Call, a weekly sport fishing debate show. And I got one for you this week, Panger. I'm throwing it out there. I mean, everybody complains when every schedule comes out, but I'm going to say that the 2022 Bassmaster Elite Series schedule was the best Elite Series schedule ever. Keep her call. And and, and, I'm excited here, so I'm just not even going to let you talk. I'm just going to roll it out. Dude, numbers do the talking. We are currently, as the time we record this, seven events into the Elite Series. Three of them. Three, one, two, three have been won by over a hundred pounds. We've had some fancy schedules. We've had some schedules where people were real excited in the off season where people said this is going to be the best ever, but so much changes. Weather has so much to do to that, but we are seven events into the elite series and almost half of them have been won by over a hundred pounds. I don't think anybody can argue with this. The 2022 schedule is the best Elite Series schedule ever. Kudos to Elo, Davey Height, and everybody involved because it was a home run. I, I think you're prisoner of the moment, Dave. I think you're, you're, you're looking just at the past recent history. You're basing this off of, off of emotions and, and numbers. And yes, the 100 pounds is incredibly impressive on those fisheries. Uh, 102 pounds, nine. Yeah, it, it's very impressive. But I, I want to look at the, the body of work as a whole. And just like you're a prisoner of the moment, maybe I am living in nostalgia, but I want to go back to the, the first year of the Bassmaster Elite Series. And yeah, we've had some good years in between there, but I want to look at, at consistency, weights, and, and quality of fisheries from top to bottom. And that 2006, that first year of the Elite Series, it, you want to talk triple digits, it started off with a bang, 104 pounds, Ish Monroe. Sight fishing, Lake Amistad. No one really knew what to expect from Lake Amistad. Here's an oasis on the Mexican border that came out of nowhere and created an economic boom in Del Rio based on, on that the next year after that. Starting things off. Now, listen to the fisheries that were in on, on 2006. And you want to talk about history and solid weights? You start off with that. Then you go to, to Sam Rayburn, to Santee Cooper, to Gunnersville, Alabama. You get Georgia in there with the pride of Georgia. You have major tournaments that, that, that I'm not even going to talk about. We'll just talk about the regular season so you don't have to compare. You hit Grand Lake in 2006 at the boom of Grand Lake at the peak of it when no one knew that a non-grass fishery could produce so many three-and-a-half to four-pound fish with a, a runaway victory in that one. You went to Kentucky Lake prior to uh, – prior – to the carp, the Asian carp getting out. It was Kentucky Lake in its prime, Dave, out on the ledges. Then you headed up north. You hit Oneida, schooling smallmouth. You went to Champlain, arguably one of the, or if not the best fishery over the past 20 years in the United States. And then you finished it in Maryland, our nation's capital on the Potomac River. You, you want to talk about uh, a, a great schedule? Oh, and don't throw in. We did end it on, on, uh, on Table Rock then, on the rock to end the year. Remember that? Spotted bass, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass. That schedule had everything. It had the triple digit weights. It had a, a plethora of historic fisheries. And I think if you look back on it, the 2006 schedule, although it didn't have the number of hundred pound weights as a whole was a better body of work than 2022. Listen, I love that. I mean, you know, I mean, I just pulled out my book. Uh, I was that, that's one of the reasons that I fell in love with the elite series. I mean, I loved everything that happened in 2006, but numbers don't lie, Panger. I mean, the numbers are the numbers. I mean, we had three events so far this year over 100 pounds. Those were that was an incredible schedule. Don't don't get me wrong. 2006 was amazing. And I think the elite series in my head, we should always drive to have the 2006 schedule. But I mean, at some point, people have to give kudos because Dude, this was put together during COVID. You know what I mean? I know there's a lot of the world that says, oh, it's over. And it's, it's not over when you're setting up tournaments. It's not over with municipal people. It's not over with city officials. They're still dealing with all of the blowback from that. To put a schedule together where you have three events over 100 pounds, and never mind the fact that one of them is a freaking smallmouth event, and two bags were over 100 pounds in that one, 
I just don't think anybody can argue. I mean, you it it on paper, it was the greatest season we've ever had. But of course, I feel that way because that's the whole idea behind the you show. Go by, you want to go numbers. You want to look strictly at, at, at how many how many zeros are, are at the end of the winning weight. Yeah, you, you got me there. I think you want to go quality, solid fisheries, top to bottom. I, I think you got to go 2006, but it, that's, a, that's just a semantics as to how you want to, to judge it. Well, it's not really up to us. People it's love to... catching big bass. So oh, they do. I love watching them. I, I like catching big bass every once in a while, too. And I hope we ha- continue to have such amazing schedules. But let us know what you think. 2022 was the greatest Elite Series schedule in history. Keep our call.